Ooh. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh. oh. Got me. So now you're reacting to the K indie duo Peppertones. One is a guitarist, another one is a bassist, and they're both vocalists. Mm -hmm. They are known for their songs about youth, and they write their own songs and lyrics as well. The other three artists in this video, drummer, keyboardist, and guitarist without glasses, are session musicians who often record and perform with Peppertones. Oh, sweet. Fast is a track from their fifth album released in 2014. The lyrics are about comforting people who live in the ever-so-busy and fast-paced world, despite how much our civilization has advanced. Peppertones. Cool That's message cool already, game. so yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with it. <clears throat> Nice bass. Yamaha drums. Sad. Ooh. Good drummer though. Nice opening fill. Nice harmonics. This is nice. This is really sick. This is really nice. Hmm. Back door. I'm grooving. Ooh, yeah, we got I'm having a why didn't I write this moment? Forward. There's like a motive. Bum, bum, bum. That's really cute. Makes me think like one, two, three, for yeah. sure. That's a little chromatic like walk up. I never hear progression like that in K Rock even. Was that just like a. Are they singing in fifths, basically? What? Are they singing in fifths, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Open fifths are a very interesting interval. It's the rock interval. Well, because it could be either major or minor, because without the third, you just don't know. Yeah. Dude, every, every person is, like, playing their instruments really well. Like, there's, like, a lot of stuff in every part. Yeah. No, very they're very dense. talented. Yeah. yeah. They're good. <laughs> so spot on. It's a nice fill. Oh. The chord changes don't even feel like chord changes. It just blends with the sound so well. You know, there's a lot of jazzy stuff going on, but it's like they're not even making a big deal out of it. Ooh. It's so much more spacious with the drums, with that simple drum beat. Oh yeah, he's not filling things anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And the keyboard isn't like... No, it'll probably pick it's up again. Because the cymbals. It's still pretty spacious. I could have used more shredding. Really? Yeah. It was nice and melodic, though. It was. It was really it was nice. Melodic. <laughs> this is really good bass playing. Oh, I like how he doesn't really sing in pitch. It's a little off. And it really leaps across his entire vocal range. No. Oh. Bridge? Bridge? The end? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's it? Oh, oh. Oh! Got me. It got me. Oh, shit. Is that a... Is he doing an organ? Oh, and he switched to the organ! Yeah, man! Yeah, man! That's it. That's the one. It's really interesting how they're like utilizing having two guitars. Yeah. Because most of the time, it's just like strumming and not strumming. Right. Not to this extent where it's like arranged where they both have like intricate parts that. Yeah, they actually. Almost have... in a sense, like sound like one part but divided between two people, yeah. sort of. You know? They actually have parts. Super good bass playing. He's just rocking out. Look at it! Bass face! That's hilarious. It's 
like a really good instrumental interlude. Like I like that a lot. We don't hear that. Yeah, we don't hear those that much in K-pop. And we have the gradual fade out. I like that fade out. Yeah, because they're all Four just like songs need the jam fade goes out. on, man. Yeah, it's like everlasting. Long live the jam. That's when you hit repeat. Go exactly. back to the beginning. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> wow, talk about vi variety. Variety. Talk about variety, am I right? Variety. <laughs> so many different textures. We had jazz organ, the drums, the lack of drums with like the spaciousness. And the drums changed to like a march feel. Yeah, and then they like <laughs> used silence and just wow. So Caught many. us off guard too. Yeah, I thought it was over and I was like, oh. Yeah, and, and then I was like, yeah, they're coming back. That, that cool guitar with glasses, that guitar like. <laughs> I don't know. Just like the instrumentation was really good. You know, and, and it was like played so well together. They communicated really well. I definitely. I feel like this is like a good mix of pop and classical rock, mm. and you know, like they had the rock instruments, but also like a little like gospel in there with the jazz organ. And I was, was like, legit. just so many. It was awesome. It was like this big segue of all these great genres that I love. The fun part about being. A rock drummer or a pop drummer is the fact that with a lot of these songs, you create your own drum parts. So it was really, really cool for me to hear like how what kind of grooves he would play for the verses as opposed to like the bridge. Um, it was tasteful too in the sense that like um, I feel like a lot of times when I hear music that's either rock music or heavily influenced by rock, the drums can be a little bit overbearing or over yeah like overbearing sometimes. But all of his fills. Um, not just sonically and not just dynamically, but also like what drums he was playing and like going from, for example, like high to low or low to high. Um, it was really, really tense. Uh, it was a really, really great job of supporting what was going on in the rest of the band arrangement wise. Like, yeah. He like restricted himself quite a bit. Yeah, he did. And it was, yeah, even like, I don't know. It was just really, really nice because like, he didn't do anything necessarily super fancy, but he did a, like, everything he played felt really, really good and made me want to dance, which is really, really awesome. Um, that's very much like a Steve Gadd approach. Or I feel like every, like, famous drummer nowadays, no matter what genre, is kind of like, they can do a lot of crazy chops, but first and foremost, foremost like, they want to make sure that yeah. everything they play uh, plays is in time, feels good, and that, like, someone could dance to it, you know? Yeah, he held back for a while, and then once it did start getting going, like... So yeah, to... but but that's also like in line with the comment I just mentioned, where he's like creating his own part. He's picking and choosing moments to where where to like kind of burst open, and you notice that he does that towards the end of the song, where the climax is before they kind of drop down and resolve them. I didn't like it. Oh, I liked it. I didn't. It was weird. It was like non-committal. Like the whole thing was so damn light. No one was doing this and breaking their necks. No, I'm kidding. I mean, that's the thing. That's why I don't know if I want to say anything because I don't even know if it's a, like a legitimate complaint because the guitar work was pretty good. The like ham and organ sound was surprising. See, Jared, I, go. I want to hear what you think. See, I need I, to look at these guys. I enjoy it. The only, the only thing I wish, wish I got more of, I wish there was a little bit more of the keyboard in the mix because it's like I really had to like, like I was like leaning for like really like like you're like leaning in with my ears trying to like find it. And it was like, there was just a lot of, uh, getting a lot of guitar and drums, but just not enough keyboard. But I really liked, I don't know, I felt like I was going on a little, I feel like I was going on an adventure, man. Like, yeah. we, we were kind of meandering at times, but it was like a fun, it was like a lighthearted well, meander, so it's like, yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was like fun. It, it, it felt like, you know, a bunch of dudes just, you know, getting their instruments together and just playing <laughs> together, and like, they were having a good time, so it's like, they were radiating positive energy, so I was... I think I was picking up their vibe. I thought it was so relaxing to listen to. And it's just like the, I, what I appreciate is the aspect of having such a simple structure of it. It's like you have the faster rhythmic percussion line, and then you have the core harmonies that are coming in. It's like the later half of the um, measure. There's a nice, nice groove to it. It's very slow paced, but then you have the vocal lines that are just very, quite ethereal. They really know how to let things just ease up and then bring back the tension, even though the tension that they're bringing is a very soothing vibe. So it's like soothing and then even more soothing and then bringing it back a little bit higher. So it's just, you're in a very comfortable ride throughout the whole entire piece. Now, may we move to the piano and I'll teach you a little, a little modern theory. So, you know how Isaac was talking about that soothing vibe, even though this is like a, literally a song called Fast and Fast Paced? Well, 
There's a reason for that. It's because there are these intervals that he uses that, that are used in a lot of New Age tunes, especially um, the guitarist in this song. It's the... Like you hear this a lot. Or like, like that's literally one of the riffs. And we can't really describe this in terms of keys because, you know, like, okay, is it one, three, four, uh, five, seven, one? What is it? Well, we're going to use some modern theory because modern theory, 20th century theory, people stopped using tonalities. And what they did was they counted in half steps. So what we call this is 015. I know we're counting downwards, but this is how they did it. I'll explain it later, I guess. But O, uh, the first note is always zero. And then this is one. And then you count two, three, four, five. Oh, one, five. Even though, like, like th this type of sound is the oh, one, five sound. Learn that. <laughs> That's so good! First of all, how have only 140,000 people seen this? This is fucking awesome. They're under the same company as Ejena, so it's a smaller but the best company. Ever. This company rocks! They're so good! This is... It's so true to its roots, and it's extremely original, and it very much adopts other sounds from, from other bands that already exist. They pull them in and implement them in ways that American artists are just blind to at some times. This is awesome. I'm actually going to check this out. From what you were saying about it, it being about trying to bring people back from a world that seems like it's made a lot of advances, but really is just kind of isolating us and making us feel overwhelmed. Um, so I think having sort of the retro things like a fade out or have like a, everybody stops playing and then you like slowly build everything back up. I feel like that's not something that, that's something that has happened in music history, but like isn't necessarily on the forefront, the cutting edge right now. So I think, and, and even like the music video itself, just being like a studio vibe with a bunch of people just jamming out together. I think that's kind of, that, that's definitely what they were going for is just trying to take us back to that sort of, a uh, time gone by where we, we all weren't drowning in our own anxiety 24 seven. Hello everyone, I'm Uma, React to K channel creator, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed or learned something from it. If you'd like to support us or help React to K grow, you can do so by visiting our Patreon and help us out by pledging any amount you can. Till next time!